What's up, y'all? This is Lizzie and this Ball Sun TV. And today we got the rise and fall of Semi Homie. For the people that don't know who Semi Homie is, Semi Homie is a DMV rapper. He from Washington, D.C. He from Saratoga. Saratoga is a neighborhood that's in Washington, D.C. It's known for like violence, being gangster. They fly, they get money. I know them for like 448 chains. They wear chains that say 448 diamond chains. This block get money though. This definitely a get money block. And they be deep out there. Like they be deep, like ridiculous deep on this block. It's like so in the open, it's like a street. They breed, they breed gangsters from right here though. To be from right here, you definitely gotta be a gangster. This is one of them spots, like this is one of them ones. A lot of people die up here. And a lot of people from their neighborhood became rappers. Like, they got a rap culture up there now. First, it was June. June was before Semi Homie. You don't know who June is. June is a rapper. He from up there, too. That's who, I ain't gonna say he started the way, but Barack kind of started the way. They got a rapper from up there named Barack. Barack dropped the Shot Glizzy disc back in the day. It went viral. And he got that song, something, something like a school teacher. That was a hit, like a DMV hit. It was a hit inside the uh, DMV. But Rock, then came June, then became Semi Homie. June ended up passing away to gun violence in another neighborhood in the city of, of Paradise. We're going to get to that in the story. So Semi Homie from Saratoga, Semi Homie started rapping. I met Semi Homie from Cruddy Murder. Cruddy Murder from Paradise. Paradise is the neighborhood that June passed away in. June is from Saratoga. June and Semi Homie is from the same neighborhood. I know Cruddy Murder personally. So Cruddy Murder was hanging tough with June first, but June passed away around Cruddy Murder neighborhood. I don't know personally how Semi Homie and Cruddy Murder formed a bond where they started hanging out. But after June passed away and June being from that neighborhood, the next rapper up from that neighborhood, I guess, was Semi Homie. And Semi Homie and Cruddy Murder ended up linking up and they started hanging out. Uh, Semi and his friends was hanging in Cruddy neighborhood. And I know Cruddy, Cruddy, that's my mutual friend. So I had mutual conversations with Semi Homie through Cruddy Murder. I might call Cruddy. Semi might be in the background or might be interviewing Murder and I'm trying to get one from Simi and we trying to put a date together. I follow him on Instagram, he followed me back. He dropping songs. I promote music, so I'm promoting this music more cause he be with Murder and I hear his songs now that's more in tune to me cause he be around Murder. And so now I'm hearing it and he, he getting a wave in the city loving his music he rapping like he talking that talk send me one of the ones so send me end up catching fire like him and murder became like a rap duo in a dmv they got songs that's over a hundred thousand views but they in the streets they two neighborhoods send me home he got a neighborhood saratoga and Cruddy murder got a neighborhood Paradise, they into it. Paradise into it, who they into it with. And Saratoga into it, who they into it with. But Murder and Semi hang out. So I guess the enemies of they, they hood and the enemies of his hood are enemies of all they hoods together now. So it's like, pick a side. So now it's divided. This side of town rappers rap. Semi homie, Cruddy Murder, his side of town rap. It's like whoever cool with them, cool with them, whoever cool with them, it's two sides. So now the rap scene is split up. So now they into it, they rap, they rap and they get they getting into rap beefs with with they ops. They going back and forth, but they ops, they ops are bigger than them. They drop videos, do a hundred K, two hundred K. They got one of the biggest rappers in the city that uh, Cruddy Murder is known for getting into it with one of the biggest rappers in the city, you know, Savage. And he doing numbers, he doing millions. So 
Cruddy is doing 100, let's say close to 100,000 views at the time, getting to 100,000 views, but he getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. Semi homie, the same, he doing hundreds of thousands of views now, 200,000 views, he catching traction. It's like the young guys love him. He got the same, he got the swag. He got, he talked to street talk. He got the, he got the swag with it. He got the, the money. He can back it up. He just popping that talk. And he was known for jacking him and his little crew. He was known for jacking. That's in his music. His music is like jack boy music. So you might hear, I don't know him personally for jacking nobody, but I heard allegedly he was known for jacking. You can hear in this rap, like some, 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 I take a nigga, he just the take the, and he stand on it. And his favorite line back, on the man. When you say on the men, on here, on the men, you think it's in me on me. So he end up getting a chain from a rapper that's from Southwest named KZ. So don't y'all know Money Man KZ, the guy that I dropped his paperwork like DMV first rapper rap. So I dropped DMV first rapper rap. This was probably like three days ago. So he dropped a diss song. He dropped a diss song. He said my name in the diss song. He said cruddy name in the diss song. He said send me. Just money mob. Just send us subliminals. And he said he can't be dragged on. Well, I don't think this is being dragged on. This might be Dragon Tales. Like, let's go on to Dragon Land. They took him to Dragon Land. This is Dragon Tales. This is bigger than Orc. I'm just here to tell you. So, look. He dropped a diss song. And in the diss song, I, my chain had got taken from somebody that I let use my chain. And they got it taken from, we know all the story, Earl. Some, so some, as I think got out of Earl hands, a lot of guys took pictures with it like it was on the tour. It went on the chain tour, so boom. So one of the guys that took a picture, chain, a picture with the chain, he screenshotted them and put them in his diss song because he had a mask on and tried to make it look like it was him who robbed me for a chain. I've never been robbed for a chain. That happened in Virginia. I was in New York when it happened. I, I don't even know nothing about it. So it's cool. So that was going on. That happened two days ago. He dissed me two days ago. His chain is in possession of the, the chain snatchers right now. Like, he goes chain right here. He ain't got that chain no more. I'm just here to tell y'all. So how he say he the talk of the town? He be popping. Lil Boston Richie. Hey, Boston. Hey, Lil Boston. I'm here to tell you this, Boston. I don't know how you about to get back from this. I don't know. You can't get back from this. Like, you say you ride around with that Drake. Okay, so look here. You need to take Drake to a concert and make him sing. You need to be running through the six with your woes right now. You hear me? You need to be signing OVO, running through the six with your woes. If you don't know what the, that Drake you got, you need to go make him sing. Drake don't need to do nothing but sing right now. You hear me? La 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 bamba. I'm talking about you paid a hundred thousand for a chain. Actually, you paid seventy five. And the jewelers in my DMs, he says you still owe him fourteen thousand. This is crazy. He said you owe him fourteen thousand. You gave him bad check for twenty. So you really thirty five in a hole, bro. You've been paying on that jump for like since paying on that jump, but I ain't even trying to pitch your business out here. <laughs> How's it feel to get your neck took it though? It's like, and you get a CNN interview, like a whole documentary joke. Like, oh my god, y'all got hit these diss songs. It was like a few moments later. Like, how long did that last? Damn, I'm trying to see what the hype about. Catch you with that chain, we getting it, getting them iced out. Picasso's. Hey, nah, man, this is a crazy world. Like, the city is really lit, though. Like, this is, like, the biggest situation in the city right now. So I'm just here to say, what you about to do now? You keep around here doing all this, trusting everybody. Then they said the word through the grapevine. Inside man told me you was butt naked. What you doing, butt naked? Of course, you butt naked. What you doing, butt naked? Freaky little dude. You're a freaky little dude. <laughs> You're trying to be freaky. Wow. That's crazy. I had a song on how I go. This is a selection from the choir. This is how they be in church. This is a selection from the choir. Can you please stand? Today's a good day. I'm sorry for good times. Nothing but proud and joy. I know your chain gone, but. It's gonna be all right. I thought I told you stop that bluffing, but you cannot change. And now we got your diamonds, and I know you feel pain. Today's a good day. 
Sorry for good times. <laughs> Nothing but proud and joy, KC. It's going to be all right. You better go pray to God. You need a deacon right now. You need some holy oil, a deacon, a grandmother, and two peppermints. And you'll be all right. I'm telling you, the only thing to get you over this right now is some Bishop T.D. Jakes or what's his name? Never would have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now when I see you, was there for me? And I don't have to say. Nah, for all jokes aside, though, y'all, the sweetest guy in D.C. history of jury goes to KZ. I'm just here to tell you. I could have been your jeweler, bro. Like, you should have just gave me the money and I would have put the chain on Lil Wayne. You would have never got it. It would have still been a better story than you got the chain. Like, bro, you ain't even get to enjoy that chain, bro. Like, lonely enough. I know he ain't want to know how nigga wearing no chain with his name on it anyway. I'm just here to tell you, man. He the realest. You over here trying to live all safe, you know, swag, man. Don't live safe, man. But you know how we going to do it. It'll be all right. You ain't nothing but the beard of the town. How many times you been wrong? One too many, two too many, three too many times. I feel like KZ made a diss song. I told you I run a blog, so I had said something about some paperwork about KZ being hot at the time. And I told you I know murder. Murder is cool with me. We mutual. So KZ had got into it with Murder, Semi, and me all at the same time. So KZ went and dropped the diss song, and it had Semi homie name in it. I told you Semi took the chain, and he dropped the song. And Semi didn't take the chain, but Semi ended up with the chain. And Semi dropped the song, but prior to taking the chain, it was two, it was two, it was two chains took it. I mean, it was two robbery incidents, a ring and a chain. First, prior to the chain, it was a ring. A girl, some situation with a female, some female set KZ up and got his ring took it and it ended up with Semi Homie. Then later on, Semi rapped about it in his songs. So KZ retaliated, just so that when KZ retaliated, he had three things going on. He was getting to a murder about something and he was getting to it with me about clowning about some paperwork and the Semi Homie stuff he had going on. So he dropped a diss on with all our names in it. And it was going viral. But the KZ story, you got to go to the rising and fall of the KZ to understand the second part of the story to understand the KZ part of it. So he been tried so many times. So now, prior to him being tried so many times, now this girl got this ring. So now the internet know. They got this internet, the pandemic, the internet, the IG live, all that's popping. When something happened, it just go viral it's on the internet and the whole city talking about it. So the whole city is blowing up about this ring, but he, he got money. So he gonna overplay the ring, he go buy some chains. He go buy some new chains, overplay the ring. Like that ring ain't about nothing, buy a new ring, replace the ring, it's just a little ring. A ring don't hit as hard as a chain. Then they take his chain. Like some months later, not even months later, let's just say years later, a year went past, he built the buzz, they saying he hot. He got the ring, took him, he bought more jewelry. Now he got jewelry on, now he got a chain on. Now he just turned up. He got the high bone on. But now that he's been robbed so many times and betrayed by the, by the females, now he moving by himself. Now he got all this. Now he became IG-ish. Now once they put him on about that ring, they tease him on Instagram and all that. Now he's been trying to get back. Since that ring on Instagram, everything he do is for Instagram for throwing y'all face. So now he bragging. Now he back at the ring. Y'all broke. Everybody broke. Y'all niggas. Y'all be hating on me. This, that, and the third. He just doing his thing. But he really, for real, for real. People hate on KZ, to be honest. Just to be honest, I feel like people just hate on him because he get money, he small, and he don't really got no super duper muscle behind him. But I feel like people just hate on him. KZ was a good nigga. Long live KZ, he ended up passing away. So now they end up, semi homie end up with KZ Chain, but he running around town with KZ Chain. In the midst of him running around town with KZ Chain, he taunting KZ. KZ just got a Neff chain. He taunting them. They making diss songs going back and forth. The city is lit. Semi Homie was already doing hundreds of thousands of views. So once he got this chain to conceal his image, the image that he was putting out of the Jacka, I told y'all to take an image music. Once he put the stamp on it by taking somebody else's chain in the city that was had a little buzz and put a stamp on, took him to another level. He signed a record deal weeks later, right off that. His buzz is out of this world. He was posting on Say Cheese. He was posting on Billboards. 
in New York. And then in the midst of that, taking that chain, he ended up with the Lil Lifer chain, the guy Lil Lifer, I don't really know him, but it's a guy named Lil Lifer from Maryland. He ended up taking his chains. And today we got bed of the week. Mr. No Locking got caught locking. Damn. I can't believe it myself. <sighs> I'm going to tell y'all a story. This is what happened. I was on IG Live. I just was chilling. It's a little rapper in the city. And they was like, man, he got his chain snatched. I didn't know who they was talking about, but I found out who got his chain snatched. I've been on live all day. And I ain't heard nobody say nothing about no stories or nothing been going on in the DMV. It's been a dry day. Like, nothing been going on at 2 o'clock in the morning. This sh happened at 2 a.m. Like, it's no litter than this. Like, the city is lit. Like, wake the city up. Like, I'm just here to tell you, your name is Lil Lifer. If you get anything less than life behind, not behind this chain, I don't think, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you, it ain't nothing you can do but slide. So we slide. had two chains at one time on his neck. Him and Cardi Murder running around doing hundreds of thousands of views. They going, uh, Cardi going back out of town, uh, getting beats for him, bringing them back. They making music. They going up. He signed a deal for I think a hundred thousand dollars or fifty. I don't know. But and the whole city just happy for him. We just happy for him. He turned up. I just met him through Cruddy. and he just, he just wanted to win. He just wanted street guys. He in the streets, yeah, but. He was trying to get him some paper. One thing about it, he was on some paper. And I told you he ended up with KZ Chain, but Semi Homie was getting into it with KZ behind the chain back and forth. He had just signed a record deal. And in the weeks of him signing a record deal, maybe a month later, he ended up passing away. Jess Arnold is live at the scene of that shooting, working to get more information. And Jess, do we know how these three people are doing their conditions this morning? Yeah, our desk spoke with police just less than two hours ago. They said that one man is still in critical condition. The other two, however, are in non-critical condition, again, as of about two hours ago. Now, evidence teams out here at the scene just left within the last 30 to 45 minutes. We're here at Saratoga and Montana Avenues Northeast. Let me give you a quick look at the scene as we're seeing it here early this morning. Now, we're going to give you a look at some footage from right after the shooting happened last night. Again, that's about six hours ago. Police say shooting was called in around 1030 last night near the intersection of 14th and Montana Avenue Northeast. Now, when they arrived, they found three men with gunshot wounds. One was not breathing at the time. But again, at last check, all three are still alive, one remaining in critical condition. Now, police said they also found 30 plus shell casings around the scene throughout the night. And they tell us some cars and buildings were even hit by bullets. Now, as you can see, there are still police out here. Some of these roads are still blocked off. So we'll, of course, continue to update that for anyone who has to leave out for work in a bit, but homicide detectives were also called to the scene last night. Again, we're still not confirming whether or not there was a homicide in this case. As of now, all three men are still alive and recovering in the hospital, and we still don't have any information from police about any suspects. So like out of nowhere, just randomly, like he was just beefing. We all just was arguing with KZ on Instagram and sent me home and up passing away like the next day. One of the victims has died. Adam Longo has spent the night gathering some brand new details from our newsroom. What do we know? So, Leslie, just as the sun was going down tonight, WUSA 9 got this, the police report on the shooting that we've been asking for. 21-year-old Javon Jones was killed here. Two others were injured. This is the footage of the scene that we brought you last night on WSA 9 News at 11. Well, since then, we have learned a whole lot more. I mean, this entire area just got completely sprayed with bullets. And when I mean the entire area, I want you to take a look at this map here. So we're going to zoom in here on the intersection of 14th and Montana right here in the Brentwood neighborhood. This is Rhode Island Avenue. So Montana in 14th right here. And we're going to zoom in a little bit more here because I want to show you some of the residential areas here, right? So that was Montana Avenue. This is Saratoga. There are places that got, that's where the two other victims got shot here along Saratoga. A bunch of these homes were hit. I mean, 1420, 1418, 1417. So we're now we're talking on both sides of Saratoga Avenue where this shooting happened. And a couple of the houses up here on 14th Street Northeast as well. Now, this police report indicates that in addition to the three people who were shot, eight vehicles got hit out here. Seven windows in those buildings shot out. Bullets hit a bedroom wall, a living room wall, an office window. Frankly, it's astonishing that more people didn't get hit 
by all this gunfire. We actually saw more than 30 shell casings out here on the scene when our photographer was there last night. No arrests at this point, but police do want to hear from you if you can maybe. Like he dropped a diss song probably about a week and he passed away. But I told you he was already in the streets. He had so much going on. The streets, and then when he passed away, I told you he was getting to it with KZ, and he had took the guy Lil Lifer chain. So you know KZ and Lil Lifer, they just on the internet going up that when they found out the news that he passed away. Hey, hey, I'm hey, hey, so hey, much. Hey, hey, oh, too close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah so he got to do it right, right miles per hour. Yeah, right. A good, a good mile, twenty five. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Sure. Oh, cuss. Ah, you know me, man. You know me, man. You feel good? I know you feel good. You see what ain't all that man? You say bad, little homie? Hey, what you, man? Hey, hey, you, man. Hey, still ain't got my no homie, Slim. Hey, this nigga funny. Hey, what's up? Come lose some good money. Come lose some good money, man. They got it right here. They say y'all got that hand on them dice, man. Huh? They say y'all got that y'all got that trick hand. <laughs> yeah. No, I got a good hand. I have been lost like money, man. They go this jump heavy. Hey, this jump been up like that for two hours. This been right there for a minute. I'm a stock, another stock this hit this. Come hey, what's up, what's We out here. You the police? Hey, we out here. Sadly. What's the word? It feel good. Hey, taste it in. Can't taste it in, KZ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he said, hey, he smoking that. That's huh? Yeah. <laughs> taste it in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, taste it in. Taste it in. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, 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 what you fucking on my line, bro? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> they pin signs. That they doing everything to think that they did it. Like they had something to do with it, but it had nothing to do with KZ in the chain. He didn't pass away because of that chain. He didn't pass away because of the little life of chain. It had nothing to do with that. He passed away because some guys in his neighborhood allegedly went to jail for his murder, but. It's just all a sad story. KZ ended up taunting his death, and KZ ended up passing away. So make sure y'all check the rise and the fall of KZ to get the second part of this. But I'm going to tell y'all one thing. Y'all make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel. The streets don't love nobody. If you're looking for love in the streets, you're going to have a broken heart. And this is the case. And this is what happened to him when he passed away and how he passed away. On Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, at approximately 2236 hours, members of the Metropolitan Police Department's 5th District were dispatched to the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue, Northeast Washington, D.C., for the report of a shooting. Upon their arrival on the scene, officers located three victims suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. District of Columbia Fire and Emergency Medical Services personnel were summoned to the scene and transported the victims to local hospitals for treatment. The descendant was transported to Howard University Hospital, where after all life-saving efforts failed, he was pronounced dead at 2335 hours by Dr. Frederick. The second victim was also transported to Howard University Hospital, where IT was treated for a grazed wound. The third victim was transported to George Washington University Hospital, where IT was treated for a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. The descendants' remains were transported to the office of the chief medical examiner for an autopsy. On Wednesday, February 22, 2023, Chief Medical Examiner Francisco Diaz performed the autopsy on the descendant, Javon Jones. Dr. Diaz found that the descendant has suffered one gunshot wound to the right buttocks. Dr. Diaz ruled that the cause of death was from a single gunshot wound and that the manner of death was homicide. The homicide branch was notified of the shooting of the three individuals in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast and responded to the scene due to one of the shooting victims being in critical condition at that time. 99 total cartridge casings, 7.62 
by 39 millimeter 25 cartridge casings, 0.45 auto 9 cartridge casings, 10 millimeter auto 16 cartridge casings, 0.40 SNW 19 cartridge casings, 9 millimeter 30 cartridge casings, fragments 16 and projectiles 5. Live rounds. 7.62 by 39 millimeter one cartridge evidence item number 70 and 0.40 SNW4 cartridges evidence item 97, 102, 103, and 121. The following items were submitted for testing of DNA. Item two, one cartridge casing, HSC FC 10 millimeter auto. Item three, one cartridge casing, HSRP 45 auto. Item four, one cartridge casing, HSRP 45 auto. Item five, one cartridge casing, HSRP 45 auto. Item six, one cartridge casing, HS Starline 45 auto. Item nine, one cartridge casing, HSFC 10 millimeter auto. Item 10, one cartridge casing, HSFC 10 millimeter auto. Item 13, one cartridge casing, HSFC 10 millimeter auto. Retrieved guns were used in previous cases. Gun one, 40 caliber cartridge casings. September 19th, 2021, ADW gun at 1175 First Place Northwest. February 20th, 2022, unlawful firearm discharge at 1307 7th Street Northwest. May 23rd, 2022, cartridge casings, CS1-6 MV1-6 recovered from scene and from recovered vehicle during an investigation of ADW gun at 1200 North Capitol Street, Northwest. February 21st, 2023, cartridge casings, CS2-31 recovered during investigation of homicide at 1400 Saratoga Avenue, Northeast. Gun 2. 10 millimeter cartridge casings, July 30th, 2022, contact shooting at 2300 Rosetta Street, Richmond, Virginia. Report available. Gun 2, 10 millimeter cartridge casings, July 30th, 2022, contact shooting at 2300 Rosetta Street, Richmond, Virginia. February 21st, 2023, cartridge casing CS-115 recovered during investigation of homicide at 1400 Saratoga Avenue, Northeast. Gun 3, 9mm Glock 19, SNBVU B346, July 4th, 2022. Gun 9mm Glock 19, SNBVU B346 recovered from Trevon Mayo at 3118 Groveland Avenue, Richmond, Virginia. February 21st, 2023, cartridge casing CS1-16 recovered during investigation of homicide at 1400 Saratoga Avenue, Northeast. Gun 4, 7.62 cartridge casings. March 20th, 2022, ADW gun at 601 Edgewood Street, Northeast. February 21st, 2023 cartridge casing CS23 recovered during investigation of homicide at 1400 Saratoga Avenue Northeast. Hospital follow up with two living victims. Homicide detectives interviewed the two living victims of the offense. The first victim told detectives that there was a group of individuals outside. W1 indicated that one of the guys in the group had a laser beam scope pointed at someone and told others to get out of the way as he was going to shoot the person that he had the beam on. W1 explained how IT prepared IT's family for a shooting inside their residence and that is when W1 was shot in the head causing a superficial injury that caused W1 to go to the hospital. W1 explained at the time of the shooting that there were several people outside and it seemed to W1 that all were talking to one person. W1 believed that one person was trying to help the person that was shot before the shooting occurred. 
The second living victim, W2, had suffered a lower gunshot wound to the body and was interviewed at the hospital. A green arrow will be used later in this affidavit to indicate W2's location and some of the video clips of the CCTV footage that was obtained. W2 told detectives that when the shooting took place, that IT took over and that IT did not see who was shooting and that IT did not know anything. While detectives were conducting the initial investigation, detectives coordinated with the security company of the complex where the shooting of the descendant took place. Detectives went to the location where the CCTV footage was being stored and controlled by the security company that monitored the community. Detectives were able to determine that there was footage of the shooting of the descendant. Shot spotter alerted to a total of 46 rounds. 2-21-2023, 22-35-17 hours, 14-20 Saratoga Avenue Northeast, 2-21-2023, 22-35-22 hours, 1-3-3-3 Bryant Street Northeast, 2-21-2023, 22-35-31 hours, 14-14 Saratoga Avenue Northeast, and 2 21 23 22 35 43 hours 13 22 downing place northeast while detectives were still conducting the initial investigation into the shooting of the descendant the command information center received the following text tip around four hours a call was received from a caller who wanted to remain anonymous stating that xavier matthews was the shooter the caller stated that a young lady who goes by instagram name Mew the talk set up semi homie, the descendant to be robbed by Xavier Matthews, a black male, short, light brown complexion with a face style haircut. She stated that Xavier Matthews retaliated by killing semi homie. W3 explained that IT has worked in and has managed security officers in the area for over 11 years. W3 explained to the detectives that IT has become familiar with multiple individuals in the area where the descendant was shot and killed. W3 explained that IT was able to view the CCTV cameras and almost immediately recognized two of the subjects in the video at the time of the shooting. W3 explained that one of the subjects IT observed in the video was Justin Borum. W3 described him as the shooter that fired first. W3 explained that IT is familiar with Justin Borum from the many interactions W3 has had with him in the past. W3 went on to further explain about the identification of Justin Borum by saying he recognized Justin Borum's mannerisms and body mechanics as he viewed the video. W3 said that the second subject was Jerome Dukes. W3 said that the individual holding the rifle in the CCTV footage was Jerome Dukes. W3 explained that IT was also familiar with Jerome Dukes from the many interactions IT has had with him in the past. W3 explained that the mannerisms and body mechanics of Jerome Dukes that IT observed from prior interactions were consistent with those displayed and observed by W3 in the video of the shooting. W3 told detectives that IT was able to view the same CCTV cameras from an earlier time during the same day, but in daylight hours. W3 said that while viewing the daylight footage that IT was able to view, Justin Borum and Jerome Dukes in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast where the shooting of the descendant took place. Detectives were able to run a Washington area law enforcement system, National Crime Information Center, check of the names of the two individuals that W3 provided information on. Justin Delante Borum, a black male with a date of birth of 8-17-1989 and a police department identification, PDID number of DC5, 63442, Jerome Davon Dukes, a black male with a date of birth of 126, 1990, and a PDID number of DC576087. The descendant is standing next to subject two, S2 Red Arrow Dukes, just after being grabbed and pushed to the current location. S2 was seen with an assault weapon in his right hand. It should be noted that this camera angle is one hour, five minutes, and 14 seconds ahead of real time. The descendant is walking toward the car where S2, Red Arrow, put the descendant on the ground by making the descendant go to his knees. One hour, five minutes, and 14 seconds ahead of real time. S1, Yellow Arrow, Borum, is pointing a handgun at the descendant and is forcing the descendant to the ground beside the back portion of the vehicle that they are next to. S2 is holding a rifle in his right hand 
and a handgun in his left hand. One hour, five minutes and 14 seconds ahead of real time. It is at this point that the descendant is going to the ground as S1 Borum and S2 Dukes are pointing weapons at the descendant as he goes to the ground next to the car. The gestures by each subject makes it appear as if there is communication going on. One hour, five minutes and 14 seconds ahead of real time. The descendant appears to attempt to stand up during this portion of the clip, all while S1 appears to be confronting someone as S1 and S2 are still armed. One hour, five minutes and 14 seconds ahead of real time. The descendant, Green Arrow, who was next to the rear of the vehicle where he was last seen kneeling next to, is seen starting to get up and run toward Montana Avenue Northeast in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast. S1, Yellow Arrow, is standing next to a clothing donation box. S2 is in the driveway, Red Arrow, both still armed as an unknown citizen seems to try and come between the descendant and S1 as a distraction when the descendant takes off running. One hour, five minutes, and 14 seconds ahead of real time. As the descendant is running, S1 Borum is shooting at the descendant four times before S2 Dukes starts shooting. S1 appears to be shooting in the direction of the unknown male who stepped in front of the descendant and the descendant. S1 then continues to shoot in the descendant's direction. The individual marked by the blue arrow is W2, who was shot in the lower leg. One hour, five minutes, and 14 seconds ahead of real time. S2 is observed shooting at the unknown citizen that was between S1 and the descendant when the shooting began. One hour, five minutes, and 14 seconds ahead of real time. This is a different CCTV camera between the location of the shooting in Montana Avenue Northeast and the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast. This image captures the descendant being shot as he continues toward Montana Avenue Northeast. The descendant fell to the ground a couple of times until coming to a rest at the southwest corner of Saratoga Avenue and Montana Avenue Northeast, where the descendant was shot is consistent with the direction that S1 was firing in the other footage. S1's vehicle is pulling out of the south parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast, indicated by the green yellow arrow. The date is Tuesday, February 21st, 2023 at 22:36:35 hours. S2's vehicle is pulling out of the south parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast, indicated by the red arrow. The date is Tuesday, February 21st, 2023 at 22:36:40 hours. S2's vehicle is driving at a high rate of speed, leaving the south parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast, crossing over 14th Street on Saratoga Avenue Northeast. The time is at 1036, 50 hours, Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. S1 vehicle continuing to travel in the 1300 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast towards Brentwood Road Northeast at 2236, 11 hours on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. S2's vehicle after leaving the South parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue turning into 14th Street Northeast going towards Downing Street, Northeast on February 21st, 2023 at 22.36.58 hours. On Tuesday, February 21st, 2023 at 22.37.53 hours, S2's vehicle is traveling south past the LPR in the 2400 block of 14th Street Northeast. The CIC received two additional text tips. The following are the tips received Friday, February 24th, 2023. Jerome Dukes and Justin Warham are currently at 1521 Benning Road, Northeast Unit H41, hiding from law enforcement with Javon Wheaton homicide. Currently, I seen them. Justin Warham and Jerome Dukes, that's wanted for Saratoga Northeast homicide, is hiding at Jermaine Dukes' house in Northeast DC, Benning Road, Northeast area, while Jermaine is on house arrest. A caller spoke to a detective about Jerome Dukes. The caller said that Jerome Dukes, a.k.a. Romy, killed the descendant because he was jealous. A second caller called into the homicide office and spoke to detectives about the shooting of the descendant. The caller said that Rome, a.k.a. Jerome Dukes, and his men are responsible for the shooting of the descendant. The caller also provided a phone number for Jerome Dukes as they knew it to be 240-353-7593. The caller said that supposedly 
The descendant was at the restaurant called Ruth Chris in Crystal City for a meeting. A data check of the cellular phone number 240-353-7593 of Jerome Dukes is an AT&T cellular phone number. Officers of the 4th District had discovered a vehicle in the rear of 904 Randolph Street, northeast, with some of its windows shot out and multiple shell casings inside. The officers notified the homicide of office of their discovery. Homicide detectives went to the location and viewed the vehicle. The vehicle is one of the same vehicles fleeing as the descendant was being shot and killed. The vehicle, which was a Honda CRV bearing Maryland registration 3FA, 2404 was recovered as evidence. The vehicle was towed to 401 East Street Southwest and stored inside the garage. Detectives contacted the owner of the recovered vehicle and spoke to the owner. The owner explained that IT had left the keys inside the car and only to discover that it was missing early in the morning of February 20th, 2023, as IT was going to work. The owner provided a stolen auto case number from the local jurisdiction that IT lived in. The owner was asked if they would sign consent to search the recovered vehicle. A signed consent to search was obtained from the owner. Detectives spoke to the family of the descendant. During the conversation with the family members, it was discovered that the family members had the clothing of the descendant from the hospital where the descendant died. It was at that time that it was coordinated for detectives to obtain the clothing of the descendant. A detective went to the family's residence of the descendant and took possession of the descendant's clothing that had defects in them from him being shot. The clothing was turned over to DFS for processing. The family members also provided the known cellular phone number of the descendant to be 202-642-7530. This number is a T-Mobile carrier number. The image is at Saratoga Avenue and Brentwood Road Northeast. The subject vehicle is in the 1300 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast, heading in the direction of 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast. This is the vehicle that S1 Borum is seen in and out of throughout the day of Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. The registration is DC GG8871. One minute and 16 seconds behind real time. The image is from the South parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast, which captures the vehicle that S1 driving moments before parking it in the North parking lot. The date and time of the image is Tuesday, February 21st, 2023 at 1048 hours. The registration is DCGG8871. Detectives later learned that this registration was connected to the mother of S1's child. On Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, at 1054, 23 hours, S1 Borum exits the black SUV with District of Columbia registration GG8871 in the north parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast. The vehicle that S1 drives and parked on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, at 1352 hours, which is pointed out by a yellow arrow by S1, Justin Borum, one hour, five minutes, and 14 seconds ahead of real time. This clip of the CCTV footage shows S1, Yellow Arrow Borum, and S2, Red Arrow Dukes, walking together in a north parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast. The time watermarked is 1358 hours, true time, 1258 hours. The clip of the CCTV footage at 14. 01 hours shows S1 yellow arrow and S2 red arrow walking together. This image from CCTV footage is in the south parking lot in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast. The tag number for this vehicle is Maryland Registrations 5FD9125. This vehicle is registered to S2 Jerome Davon Dukes address of 3563 55th Avenue Apartment 4 Highsville, Maryland 20784. The vehicle is a 2014 four door black BMW. In the background, S1's vehicle is parked in the same location as it was pointed out in previous images. This image from CCTV footage at 1449 hours on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, shows S2 Red Arrow Dukes exiting his vehicle. 
The two images above are from a CCTV camera in the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast on the south side of the street pointing towards Montana Avenue Northeast capturing the North parking lot. The image time indicates that it is 2146 hours. The images are of S1 walking up to the vehicle that he had been associated with throughout the day of Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. The DC registration is GG8871. On March 2nd, 2023, W3 responded to the homicide office for the purpose of conducting an identification procedure that was videotaped. W3 indicated that IT had safety concerns for itself and IT's employees by participating in the identification procedure, but W3 was ultimately cooperative. W3 indicated that this fear was based in part of past incidents where shooters would return the next day after being arrested. W3 was able to identify Borum, S1, and Dukes, S2, based upon many interactions with them going back to 2011. W3 had access to the surveillance video and reviewed the footage on IT's own and contacted detectives to inform them of IT's identifications. W3 reviewed the surveillance going backwards until it was daylight hours so that IT could be sure of IT's identifications. W3 was also assisted by Zooming. A homicide detective unrelated to the investigation showed W3 an array with nine photographs. Within approximately 10 seconds, W3 indicated that IT recognized an individual and pointed to photograph number six. W3 identified the individual in photograph six as Justin, Justin Borum. W3 indicated that this individual was the one who fired the first shot, S1, and who has started the whole shooting. W3 indicated that IT has known Justin Borum since 2011 and has had many interactions with him over the years that were good, bad, and indifferent. Sometimes Borum would give W3 lip or park his vehicle on the property despite being previously barred. W3 had personally provided Borum a barring notice in the past. W3 indicated that Borum would spend a lot of time inside building 1428 when asked by the detective what W3's level of certainty was, W3 responded that IT was as if IT was reviewing a picture of IT's wife. That was how certain W3 was of IT's identification of Justin Borum, S1. W3 initialed photograph number six. Photograph number six was in fact a photograph of Justin Delante Borum, black male, date of birth, 817-1989, PDID number 563-442 that was retrieved from an existing police database. W3 was shown a second and different array of nine photographs. Almost immediately, W3 pointed to the photograph number four, identifying this individual as Jerome Dukes, S2, who was the one with the rifle on the video surveillance and who has been barred from the property several times in the past. IT never had an issue personally with Dukes like IT had with Borum. When asked about how certain W3 was with his identification, W3 made a similar statement of certainty as the wife's statement. However, Ingest indicated that IT was as certain as if this was a photograph of a woman who he was involved with that was not his wife. W3 laughed after making that certainty reference, but then got serious and indicated that it was extremely confident of IT's identification of Jerome Dukes as two. Having worked in the area since 2011, W3 also indicated that IT recognized other individuals in the photo arrays, but none of those from the night of the homicide. W3 initial photograph number four, Photograph number four was, in fact, a photograph of Jerome Davon Dukes, black male, date of birth, 1-26-1991, PDID number 576-087, that was retrieved from an existing police database. Based upon the aforementioned facts and circumstances, your client believes that probable cause has been established and respectfully requests that an arrest warrant be issued for Jerome Davon Dukes, a.k.a. Rome, S2, black male, date of birth, 126-1991, PDID number 
576-087 for the murder of Javon Jones on February 21st, 2023. This is the rise and the fall of Simi Helmy.